हाय वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग सभी को नमस्कार ए वॉम वेलकम टू इलेट्स एट एक्स समिट ऑन फिफ्टीन अप्रैल ऑन दिस वंडरफुल मॉर्निंग आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम ऑल माय ऑडियंस ऑन दिस अवतार प्लेटफॉर्म वाचिंग अबाउट द इनोवेशंस इनिशिएटिव टेकिंग केयर बाय द एट एक्स एट एक एंड द न्यू इनिशिएटिव फॉर द फ्यूचर ऑफ द एजुकेशन सो टू प्रोसीड I would like to invite for this exclusive session, Mr. Ravi Sundar Rajan, Chief Operating Officer, Kapshap, who will discuss and deliberate on the EdTech and the future of EdTech. So I would like to introduce Mr. Ravi. He is the Chief Operating Officer. Ravi heads product operations, sales, marketing, business development, and support for the Kapshap enterprise. messaging business that has grown to become the leading cloud messaging platform under his leadership gapsap is doing wonderful work in the edtech and in the education space so to more know about this gapsap what the innovation what the initiative taken in the education domain how they are helping the edtech so i would like to invite mr ravi to share his deliberations not taking much time i will invite to take the virtual dice ravi ji over to you hi welcome to edtech 2022 hope you're having a great conference i'm ravi sundar rajan today we as as we look at the landscape and what's happening especially various other services moving online edtech or education is a key area which has gained from some of the trends that have uh, taken over emerging markets like india the factors that have driven this are threefold one is the huge availability of bandwidth and cheaper uh, smartphones second is the need to get services remote and third is a lot of innovations innovations in terms of um, a lot of uh, conversational commerce conversational ai and conversational messaging which enables having um, enables consumers to engage with their brands in a much more uh, natural way so given this you know and the uh, to add to all this the pandemic obviously has accelerated some of the adoption of online tools and online engagement uh, with the availability of various of the factors that we mentioned before and education has been one of the um, Early adopters, or in fact, driven a lot of this online engagement. As you see, over sixty-five percent of the test prep and primary secondary education has moved online because parents didn't want their children to fall behind, in spite of the the, the pandemic, which has affected a lot of people over the last two years. So, a lot of it has moved online, and obviously, even professional reskilling and higher education and and uh, language classes, that also has moved online as people have more time to uh, with the lesser commutes, they can. spend more of the time uh, getting these courses done remotely so and and as naturally as you as you would see e learning or online education has taken over offline teaching and over uh, 90% of the students prefer uh, online coaching uh, and then in fact over 50% of the indian students are comfortable and a lot of the indian brands like uh, leading indian brands are moving some of these things and taking their services and the learnings from india to other emerging markets and even developed markets where people have been um, open to getting uh, uh, you know offline education especially when location is not not a preference so this has caused a, a huge upheaval in the way education is delivered and for traditional online uh, traditional offline services now just like other services that are moving towards messaging apps uh, even educational engagement is moving to messaging apps so what what happens is that currently you know um, the old model you had the website and people obviously moved from the web model to app model like with super apps like uber and all that stuff but then there's an app fatigue and then also in markets like emerging markets like india you don't there's a limit limitations of bandwidth and also screen screen space uh, people cannot download you know 10 apps for uh, you know booking 10 for airline 10 for banking so whole you know there's a app clutter so what's happening is the engagement part of it uh, especially you can just go to a link and and have other ways of accessing some of these courses but 
the engagement, the day-to-day -day student engagement, teacher engagement, and ability to kind of navigate these things is moving to where you naturally have conversations and natural engagement, which is the messaging app. And that's the most popular ones. In fact, uh, apps like WeChat have taken over everything from e-commerce to booking to, to uh, ride share, uh, you know, entertainment uh, and education. So these apps have uh, kind of, uh, uh, driven the adoption of these apps have increased and because that's the most common thing you use in your mobile the number one thing you do is message and then and you message using text messaging or your popular online lab app like facebook uh, like whatsapp or uh, in or if it's other markets like china it's wechat and and uh, you know viber and then line in some of the southeast asian markets um, and and so on and so forth so so that is a big trend where the brands have, have realized that they have to go where the consumers are today and through conversational experiences on messaging apps education can now converse with students now obviously you have it's, it's always been uh, the case where you have some of the content online but the conversational part of which is essential part of any teaching is through conversations where people ask questions everybody has different questions and the need for personalization becomes is 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 enabled by conversations because what conversation allows is interactivity and personalization. In fact, that's much more than the physical setting. Where in the physical setting you may have you know one to many, and then uh, you know you have a class size of hundred students, hundred and fifty students, uh, and and they are all sitting there, and there's one teacher, and then you know it, you don't have the time to ask the right question, or you're not um, the environment is not right. Whereas here you can even make it much more personal uh, through conversations because different type of questions are differing on different students ability and also it's interactive and always on you can take a course late night if it's recorded and even the some of the common questions can be answered and then they can be come back and then come back and engage and that's where some of the offline uh, online engagement around these content educational content is through natural conversations where uh, students and also, you know, based on language barriers and how much of a graphics you can use, all that stuff helps when you're using some of these uh, online apps and online engagement and conversational experiences. Some of it even could be channels like voice can be added and so on and so forth. So the, this this completely changes the way educators engage uh, millions of students, uh, engage their students, and then also the parents in a much more personalized way, even if parents have a uh, you can give them tools for parents to nudge their students into new lessons uh, and also uh, as they master the content they can move to different levels and have always on support so here what they do is and also with, with with these apps awareness they can create a lot of awareness about the certain courses answer questions uh, in in a much more uh, we're using rich media which is much more e easier we're using videos uh, through even common messaging apps like WhatsApp, which some of our customers are doing, uh, and also create much more st better student engagement through AI, artificial intelligence bots, where they can learn and converse and be always on and, and be available. So it make it so now what happens is it's become more engaging. Why? Because it's personalized, interactive, always on, and it's one on one as opposed to one to many. And that's a huge change. And it's through entire thing. It's just not only, uh, as I told you, the engagement is just not about just the content assimilation, but it's also you know how you do uh, create awareness about your thing, uh, get them into the right course uh, by counseling and course selection, and then enable some of the even collections and payments through this uh, typical test assignments, feedback, you know, and and uh, reinforcement and and solving doubts is becoming a big thing. So it's like what you have now is you have a personal counselor, personal teacher who can work with you based on your needs and your requirements and create custom curriculums where you get to know the student well and have intelligent conversations using a combination of uh, online um, conversations and intelligent bots uh, and a lot of automation that helps you to serve the right content to the right people and add it up with live uh, support where you have bot to agent handover where actually people can answer questions live and also create much more richer uh, engagement through videos uh, and other tutorials uh, breaking down language barriers so what you can what it enables you to do is you can if you're a tech brand right and you're attending this conference what you might be used to like okay i'm i'm having doing 
I can do some interactions. I can use a website. I can use my own ed, ed tech app. Uh, that's what you might think of. Uh, that's what people were thinking of. Uh, but it's already changed now with the pandemic, with the innovations uh, uh, and online innovations uh, in the various tools and availability of bandwidth and smartphones uh, and the uh, people being uh, have experienced over the last two years how things can go from one on uh, one to many to one to one, make it much more personalized, interactive, and use conversational AI to make it conversational and cross different uh, language barriers and also access uh, different levels of, uh, um, uh, you know, access to different levels, education levels. All that is transcended. That's where it is today. But if you fast forward a, a couple of years from now, you can actually have tailored experiences, very personalized experiences, micro personalized experiences, micro journeys, it's every step of the way. And, uh, and this also would lead to better, uh, you know, uh, consumption of content that you do, it could be because now it's so personalized, you can have different levels of content based on different levels of aptitude and their willingness to take on new things. So it provides much more a broader range and opens up the palette a lot more and makes it much more uh, micro customized and and very uh, and you know the preferences and stuff like that. So we'll we'll talk about some case studies that we have done. So Khan Academy obviously is a well known one of the leading educational brands. And so what they did is though they their content is well known, everybody knows about the content. They had an issue of student and teacher engagement, especially as they scaled in emerging markets uh, where WhatsApp is the most common app. And anyway, they they were having personal conversations on WhatsApp and it was using the consumer version. They said, excuse me, why can't the challenge that they faced is how do I, you know, there's a high turnaround time and they use SMS uh, and it, or even apps, in-app notifications. So, and, and also everybody doesn't download every app in tier two, tier three cities, what do you do? Different, different states, India, and also emerging markets in Asia. So what they said is they wanted, uh, they use WhatsApp for better engagement with parents and teachers, reaching a wider audience and delivering uh, custom assignments, guides, learning tools much more efficiently using a WhatsApp bot uh, and also getting people in using QR codes. And there you can, uh, and also you can using buttons and templates and list messages uh, and some of the, uh, you know, um, cataloging features where you can actually have different catalogs and, and so show much more richer media to interact and do it in an app that everybody has and they don't have to go anywhere else. So reaching a wider audience in different states and different languages in India and various other markets in Asia, they, they used uh, WhatsApp. The other example that we can, uh, that I can uh, talk about is Doubtnet, and they they actually have such huge uh, engagement on WhatsApp. They do several million messages a day. It's, it's about three million uh, or, or more. But so here, what they do is they have they they serve you know it allows them to have multiple languages. But also what they did is what they have, a, they came up with a very specific way that's catered to WhatsApp where uh, people, uh, when people can just take a snapshot of the question, a photo of the question that they have, and, and it's, uh, it currently is for maths, physics, uh, uh, maths and physics. So, and they send that to, to uh, Doubtnet. And then based on the photo, automatically the bot will recognize the question and play the video to answer that question. And this engagement is so huge as I told you, there are millions of messages from different levels of uh, uh, different languages, different cities, tier two, tier three cities. And here, they, it's all STEM related questions, you know, math, physics, chemistry, uh, biology. So here, you, you're matching a student query with the pre-recorded content in Doubtnet database, it's all automated. It just takes a photo, matches it with the pre-recorded content, and then efficient way to serve the students. Uh, and, um, you know, here, uh, we we kind of drove the WhatsApp bot and the WhatsApp connectivity and and the WhatsApp scaling uh, to had, had handle millions of users with millions of questions um, and then you know had, handling all these videos at, at such large volumes and add, adding and doing that in different languages. This was a resounding success where they have uh, you know over two hundred percent increase in daily users and a ninety five percent user satisfaction. So. All in all, I think, you know, the thought that I want to leave with you is we're just getting started. This is a completely new way of delivering, uh, engaging students and teachers and changing the way education is delivered, where this offline medium, where personalized, interactive, always on uh, the competing with some of the offline mediums, even when we go post-pandemic phase, 
is is the online medium is going to continue and drive more of the education and make much make much more accessible not only for k through 12 and and uh, some of the edu uh, the basic education but also or just basic test taking but also for higher education recertification skilling uh, you know for for upskilling and so on and so forth so this uh, this is a trend that's just getting started we are really excited about this and we think that conversational uh, engagement and conversational edtech solutions will completely change the way students and teachers engage with their brands to get the uh, level of education that they want and transform this industry. Really excited. Hope you have a great conference. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Raviji, for this wonderful initiative and innovation taken by the cup shop so i request all my audience to know more about the cup shop initiative please visit the stall at the exhibition please click on the avatar platform in the footer you will go to the exhibition you will find out the cup shop booth you can directly interact with the cup shop team also you can download the brochure and see the videos also what they have done right now in the education and the tech segment and other segment also so if you have any questions if you want to avail this solution please share your details at the gupsha booth so that the gupsha team can directly contact to you otherwise you can share your details at education at digital learning dot in so that we can directly connect with the gupsha team so that if you want to avail the solution you can proceed further so by this I will like to thank Raviji for giving their precious time to us. And I will ask Deepak to please share the token of appreciation from the Elite SecTech Summit site. This speaker certificate is presented to Mr. Ravi Sundarajan, Chief Operating Officer, Kapsha. Thank you, Raviji. Thank you very much for giving your precious time to us. And I like to request the audience to please stay tuned as with us to, for our next panel discussion. You will see more EdTech and the best speaker from the EdTech segment discussing and deliberating regarding the future and the scope of education in ed tech domain thank you thank you very much <laughs>